morning afternoon evening whenever you're watching this i don't know um today is the 21st of december so we're getting up on christmas just wanted to do show you this um i was going through these uh and trying to get them organized into a box i've got quite a few timexes here as you can probably see and the reason why I have all these Timexes is for probably two decades, I uh, repaired watches, um, not commercially, but I repaired them for people that I knew because uh, I had all the equipment and I had the space to do it and I was interested in watches. It was kind of a thankless task because if you repair something for somebody that you know, for free, they always end up coming back in a, a couple of weeks or a month and want you to do another one or they're not, uh, you know, there's something that happened to the watch. They dropped it, broke it, whatever. Uh, it's off by a couple of seconds and they're like, can you, can you fix this again? Um, can you put a new battery in it? Or they bring you like their wife's crappy uh, Chinese quartz watches some of these, some of the friends of mine I used to work with, they, their wives would have like 15 watches that they'd bought over the last few years. They were usually uh, inexpensive fashion watches, but they all had batteries in them. They were all quartz. And of course, the batteries were all dead. And they wanted you to replace the batteries in them. But, it, you know, a lot of times you would, you'd be like, okay. Um, and you would do it, but it was kind of soul-sucking because a lot of those watches really, really weren't very good watches. But... The reason why I have so many Timex, at some point uh, back, you know, 15, 20 years ago, you could buy a lot, as in a, a sales lot off of eBay of, there'd be like a jewelry store that was closing and somebody had gone in and bought the old stock out or some some uh, watch repair guy was just taking all the, the Timexes he didn't want to work on and he would throw them in a box because people didn't want to pay the money to get them fixed because they were so inexpensive. You know, if he quoted them $60 to work on a old mechanical Timex watch, they wouldn't want to do it. Say so to leave them there. So a lot of, um, a lot of these lots would come up and I actually bought a couple of different lots over a couple of different years of like a hundred plus Timex watches because I, I actually went through a Timex phase. Uh, I actually, I like Timex. Um, a lot of people don't think they're high quality watches anymore, but at some point in history, they actually were the watch to have back in the fifties uh, and sixties. You remember all those commercials? I'm not going to go into all that, but, um, they were everywhere. You could buy them at drug stores. You could buy them at grocery stores, uh, jewelry stores, but you know, for, for inexpensive watches, they worked really well. And, um, they went through a lot of different iterations. And some of these I have here are some of the iterations. I'm not going to go too deep into detail, but this one here is actually a 17 joule mechanical movement. You'll have to bear me, with me on this. Um, I've never really photographed watches before, but this one is a 17 joule. I like the face on it. It actually works. Um, this one here is a what it, it builds itself as a quartz watch but actually what it was um it wasn't quartz in the way that we know quartz now it had like a um had a pivot on it or um the armature would move back into i don't remember what it's called but it was uh operated off of, of it would pulse back and forth but it, um, they went through a phase where they, they started off and they would call them uh, electric. This one, sorry about the bad thing here. I, this one says electric. This one has a slightly different movement than this one does. This one's more crude. But actually, Timex was one of the first companies that ever had a 
an electric movement, which uh, turned uh, ultimately into the quartz movements we know today. But they use batteries, and you can still get batteries for them. They just don't, they don't work. They're not quartz accurate. If you get one to work properly, they'll actually run for quite a bit of time. A lot of these are mechanical movements. I don't know if you can see that or not. My camera is not cooperating today. Sorry, guys. I was trying to... Anyway, here here's another... If I can get that for you. This is another electric movement. Let's see if I can put more light on it. That one, this one's still working, if you can see it. Um... Boy, I thought these would photograph better. I have to apologize for this, but this is a more modern Timex. It's probably from the um, mid early nineties or mid late later or later <laughs> mid or late nineties. I'm not sure. This watch I kind of like because I have no idea what they were going for on this. It's got some kind of dragon scale thing. <laughs> it's an um, what do they call this thing? Let's see if I can. I can't read that. It was they they had a, a series of watches that were for action, you know, for active people. Um, Explorer. I don't know. Anyway, this this kind of followed the. Um, what they were trying to go for marketing wise. The bezel rotated, uh, but I, I really do like the way it looks because it looks very Asian. <laughs> I keep expecting to see like dragon heads on the ends of it because of the, the scaling pattern on the, anyway. Um, as you can see, there was quite the variety of watches manufactured over the years by Timex. And most of these actually uh, still work because a lot of them I've had a part and kind of got working. I just, you know, how many watches do you need? I, I They don't take up much room and I, I had them and I, I've probably worn every single one of these watches at some point in the last 20 years for at least for a couple of days, but I just wanted to let you know, or let you show you, all, all of these different uh, Timex variations, because they're kind of interesting when you when you get them all together like this. And this, I still think have I th think I have a couple more that um, I'm not showing you here, but uh, a couple more things that I had on this is this is a part of a dealer kit that you would buy if you were a, a jeweler and you sold Timex watches. I'll move all this out of the way here. I don't know how people actually manage to do things with one hand. This one is um, dials, I believe. But each one of these packages had a different uh, Timex style in it, a new one. And if somebody brought a watch in and for whatever reason their dial wasn't working, <laughs> you could pop a new one in, which I thought was very cool. Here, bear with me here. Not the best um, way to show this, obviously. Let's see if I can get this out of here. I guess the dial was the one to come out. Oh, there we are. What do we got? Oh, look at that. Well, that's got a piece of paper on it. I think there's a dial under there. Yeah, I'm gonna. I would have to take. I guess I'm not gonna screw with that, but. Um, <sighs> I 
I may spend more time on these if there's any interest in this. I, it's not worth it to, I don't want to produce a long video on this because I don't know how many people actually give a damn about Timex watches. It's kind of out of my thing, my, um, my channel scope, but these are all dials. Um, you got a book with it, assembly material identification chart. It would, what she would do is you would look up the number on the bottom of the, of the dial and that would indicate which envelope to go to watch model numbers. And you could just dip into this container and pull out the, the dial you needed. I put this over there for a second. This one is Minute Hands. Let's see if I can open this one up. As you can see, each one of these hands is in little uh, capsules. Isn't that cool? And I've actually pulled some uh, dial hands off of here because um, some of the watches I got in the past they the crystals had come off and the the hands were missing and I was able to replace them with that this one I think is my favorite probably there's actually movements in here There's, I guess as you uh, used the movements, you could order individual uh, tins with the movements in them to re replenish this container. Here's the instructions on reconditioned movements. Sweep second pins, part numbers do not include instructions for. Oh, I guess you could return the movements. Um, movements must be returned intact. That's interesting. Must be returned in the stainless steel container. Service crown and stem must be returned with each movement. So I guess you could bring... See, Timex did not... You didn't actually work on a... On a, um, on a Timex watch if you were a, a jeweler. You... They were, if you look at the service manual, and I actually have the service manual somewhere, you don't, you didn't take the, the movement apart. You, you could flush clean it, and that was a recommendation of, of Timex to do that, to try to get it going again. I'm going to flip this right onto the floor. You watch. You just watch. There you go. This is a brand new movement. I want my. I'm trying to do this under the light. I don't know why my camera won't pick it up. It was ticking a second ago. But you see, there was there's really no way to take this movement apart. It's riveted together. There you go. You see it ticking? Brand new movement. Is that not cool? I always thought it was. I don't know where the tin was. <laughs> the tin's disappeared. Uh, well, I'm never going to win an award for the best YouTube filmer, I guess, but I'll just put this down. There's the tin. Bear with me here. Maybe you can see it a little bit better in here. Still ticking. You know, remember the old thing takes a licking and keeps on ticking? We'll get shoved in a tin and keeps ticking. How's that? Just 
um, it's kind of neat to have new movements. I mean, if I was really uh, getting into this again, I would use these. I kind of just like having these. And then this one, right, the last one, which I think is the most useful, these are all crystals. And the single biggest thing about getting old Timex swatches, if you wanted to wear them, is all the crystals usually have cracks in them. A lot of these are in really good shape. Um, nothing horribly going on here, but I've gotten some that just had awful crystals on them. This one, this one watch, I went through and cleaned it and cleaned the uh, movement, and I actually put a new crystal and a new set of hands on it. And it actually works pretty good. You can see it's... It would work if I could get it to... I can't remember if this is an automatic or not. It must be a wind. Here, I'll give it a couple of lines. So we're going to... Yes, there it goes. It's got a really pretty face on it. Um, you can see that or not. So I guess water resistant automatic. It's got the date and the day. It's got like a lavender um, face on it, which I always thought was kind of cool. That was one thing about Timex. They made very interesting um, faces on, on these. All these watches had different. They all used a lot of the same movements, but they all had different faces and different case styles. So there's quite the variation. Look at the loom on this one. I always like this kind of the style. This is an electric. And I put batteries in this about a year ago, and it's been just ticking away for a year, but it's been losing about five or six minutes a week, so it's off by probably a couple of hours, about an hour and a half. Anyway, you kind of get the idea on what I'm trying to go with here. But um, this is about the only ones I have left of the original hoard that I had. I sold quite a few of them over the years on, on eBay. Um, there were a few that I would turn up in those lots I bought, which were actually worth, you know, anywhere from 60 to to $100. They were the, the older ones. I can find my box. Hang on a second. This would be better on a tripod, I would think. I uh, wouldn't have to keep waving you guys around. Oops. Sorry if you're getting seasick. I'm just trying to film this without um, doing any editing because I don't feel like editing today. And like the ones I wanted to show you specifically in this box. These are old. Old Timex. Like really old. From the from the 50s um, and they're my favorite because it's hard to find a really old Timex anymore these three right here Let's see if I can get a close-up on this I believe this is from the uh, Mid fifties. And if you see on here, it's the U S time. Yeah. So U S time Timex started off as, uh, you know, the, oh, hang on, get my thoughts together here. 
This one says U.S. time too. And this one says U.S. time. But if you look on this one, if you can see on this one, it says Ingersoll. Can you see that? Guess not. There we go. Ingersoll was a clock company based out of Connecticut in the early 1900s. And they started making wristwatches. Um, they were called dollar watches because they caught you could go buy one for a dollar at a you know if you were out out drinking one night you needed a watch or whatever. This is um a what happened? Uh, this is an Ingersoll that also has U.S. time on it. It's a transition watch, so that would put it probably in the mid 40s, I would think. Ingersoll transitioned to U.S. time, and U.S. time transitioned into Timex. But this one's got brass. It's got all brass gears. And if you can see, it's still working. Um, after all these years, this one's listed as Timex on the front, but it's U.S. time on the back. And this one's listed as Timex, but it's U.S. Time on the back also. But U.S. Time was around, I think, till the early 60s, late 50s. I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not an expert on Timex watches, but these are my favorite because they're the oldest I have. Um, if you uh, have any interest in pocket watches, Ingersoll made some really, really inexpensive pocket watches that were kind of on the same level as a uh, West Clock Scotty. And you could keep it in your pocket. It, it was all brass. The gears were brass, you know, thin pressed plate, pressed plate brass. But they would last forever. You could keep it in your pocket. I mean, they would keep running. Um, I'm not going to get into pocket watches right now. I just thought maybe I'm, I'm doing this because... Somebody might be interested in watches, and especially Timex watches, so I'll just post this, and if I get any views, it's fine. If not, that's fine, too. I'm not trying to burn up the world. Um, I just think it's kind of neat to have a venue you can, you can post stuff um, outside of Facebook, and there might be people out there that can watch it and appreciate it. And since I'm not monetized and I don't have any views, <laughs> you don't have to worry about watching commercials <laughs> while you're watching my videos. That should be one thing worthwhile because, boy, I'll tell you, some of these, some of these uh, videos I'm watching these days are like 50% commercials. So you'll be in the middle of something after three or four minutes and you get like a two minute commercial. It just ruins the whole experience. And then I'm seeing more and more people put, uh, like paid, you're like they're selling things for companies in the middle of their their video. So you'll get started the first couple minutes, and then you get like a five minute. They're going on about how wonderful this item is, and you should buy it. And I get money for it if you buy it off of Amazon. And I'm getting kind of tired of that too. But uh, I don't, I don't need or want to be monetized by YouTube. And when Mon YouTube first started, you didn't get monetized. <laughs> And uh, I think it's really kind of ruining the whole thing. And I just saw on the news the other day that TikTok, TikTok is giving uh, some of their influencers like a million dollars, which is which is ridiculous. Um, what is an influencer anyway? Is this somebody that talks about pimple cream? I don't I don't know. Um, look what I look what shoes I have on. Uh, I'm using this makeup. I don't, I don't give a freaking rat's butt about all that crap. Anyway, um, I think I padded this thing out maybe probably a little bit too long. Um, you don't have to like this, you know, but I appreciate if you don't like it. Don't, you know, that it doesn't show up on the thing, but I don't know. Some, some people just don't like my videos and they never say why. So I understand it's not professional. 
I'd probably be leaving. I could put the whole history down, and I could fo fo uh, and I could show this better. I could buy a tripod. I could buy a two thousand dollar camera. I could have a microphone. I could have lighting. Yeah, blah blah blah. Well, I don't want to do that. You know what? Then that makes it into a chore. You get you get that much into it. And you have to like keep making videos and keep making videos that people like because you have all this money into it. And I think people actually get addicted. <laughs> I'm sure they get addicted because they're like all these people leaving comments about, oh, you're so wonderful and I want to have your child and all this crap. I don't want any of that. I have a lot of stuff. I have a lot of stuff that I'm interested in. I'm just trying to show you what I have. Um, I'll get back into um, audio stuff again after this. If anybody actually likes this video, I've got some old Casio watches. I know Casios are real big. I've always liked Casios. I can show, make a, a movie about those. Maybe I'll be better prepared for that. Anyway, um, have a good Christmas. I'm not going to make anything else until next, probably next year. So um, any comments, be, feel free to leave comments. I try to respond back to comments if you're not something I can do anything about. So, all right. Well, ha have a Merry Christmas and I will see you on the flip side. Bye.